Alright, welcome to Stampscaping Live here with a piece on vintage pre-printed paper and just stamped with the different elements on there, okay? Now what I'm going to do on this um, live stream is just finish this piece off with shadow and highlighting. We'll utilize the um, black dye based ink and a tan-ish colored acrylic paint pen, all right? You can use white on here. It's a little bit stark, you know, so something like this that's a little bit more uh, kind of in the spirit of the lightest areas of this paper, um, to me, harmonizes with it a little bit more. You can use a gel pen or something like that. Anything that's going to stick to your paper just fine. You might even be able to utilize something like... Um, Oh, lighter tone colored pencils. Depending on what um, type of this pre-printed paper you're using. Now you don't have to use a pre-printed paper either if you're doing this. For me, it just gave me one heck of a head start for um, this scenario here. I wanted something aged and kind of um, kind of earthy and in the spirit of like a antiqued looking print because uh, I think that looks good with a kind of a, a Halloween scenario. So um, there's very little that I have to do. I don't have to do this all that coloring in the background, which would probably double the time it took to create the scenario. Okay, <clears throat> I've been playing around with this uh, cosmetic sponge uh, here for my toning and so far so good it's really working great and I really like this for the larger areas okay I can get really good coverage on here so I'm going to use this for the areas with um, a decent amount of coverage and I'm going to use a something like a black colored pencil for the you know the tighter areas on here okay all right, so this paper already has a um, vignette type of quality to it. it. It's framed off with this kind of harsh, um, I don't know what they, whatever they used on there, like a walnut ink or something like that. <clears throat> on the original piece, I'm saying, you know, it's, you know, it's printer's ink the rest of the way, but... Um, you know, whatever the original piece was to give it that uh, kind of aged look. But I'm just bringing this in a little bit more. I want to emphasize this glowing moon a little bit. So if I do that, I have to kind of turn down the uh, the lighting around it a little bit, or a lot. I don't want to eradicate the uh, the forms of the, uh, the rest of the, uh, you know, the area, but... Um, you know, I'll sacrifice some of the forms. Like this branch here doesn't stand out as much. I mean, it didn't stand out a huge amount anyway because it was against a dark cloud, but it's going to stand out even less so um, by me adding some tone behind it. So it's dark against kind of lighter. So it's going to be dark against slightly darker just for the sake of this moon standing out a touch more than it already is, okay? <clears throat> so what I'm looking at, just to change subject here, um, what I'm looking at with this sponge thing like this, I'm looking to see if I'm getting a bunch of kind of oval shapes everywhere. And I don't, it doesn't seem to be giving me that, um, even though this is a relatively porous paper. So I don't know, it's looking pretty good so far. Hello, Candy. Uh, you toss that sponge because you didn't like it for makeup. Go, go get it. Go run out. Now this one has this cutout like that. You know, some of them are the full shape. But, you know, so this one's giving me this. It's like a half dollar sized application of ink. Okay. But I got to think that this rounded side would work too. But that being said... If you can go grab that out of the dumpster. 
You can probably, t I don't know if you can get a real straight cut across that, you know. I don't know if I'd do it with an exacto. Like, if you had a really good kitchen knife, you know, you can probably just squeeze it down or like a cleaver, you know, and just chop off an angle, you know. You might even be able to do it in half this way. Do it at, on the bias like that. And that way, you'd have two of them, right? You'd, you know, maybe. Um... But yeah, I mean, see how this has given me this right here, but I don't know, maybe it's because I'm on the vintage paper right here, but I, you know, on here, I'm trying to blend it a little bit more. Let's see. Okay, now this is on copy paper, right? You know, so, or, or actually this is on just some scrap board that's like super absorbed, but you see like that? I mean, that's not too bad right there. You know, I'm not really taking too much time at all you know, to try to blend it, but I don't know. That looks pretty good to me, you know. And again, this is foam, so it's going to be super absorbent, you know. So I like materials that hold a lot of ink. Hello, Jeannie. I like materials that hold a lot of ink because if you got a, you know, a sponge that's designed to absorb wet media, um, maybe that's why you didn't like it, Candy. Maybe if you're using it for makeup, you're using dry media with it, but... On this one right here, um, like I said, uh, so far so good. Um, it really holds a lot of uh, ink, so I don't have to ink up as much either. Um, I've only tried it on this, you know, I've just been trying it last like two days, but um, you know, I don't know. Is it uh, love at first tap? I don't know, maybe. I, I'm I, I, okay. Now paper towels work fine for me too. I think people hate it when I use paper towels, though. Stamper's like, eh, Kevin, we don't want to use the paper towel. We know that we have it, but uh, you know what I mean. It doesn't feel like they're crafting if they're taking like a paper towel. It feels like we're mopping up like a, you know, a spill in the sink with that or something like that. You know, from a, I don't know, whatever. Application standpoint, maybe. So maybe something like this. And this is like something I like because they can find it anywhere in the world. Hello, Patty. Um, yeah, so, you know, um, back when I used to use the stylus tools, you know, someone in Australia, it's like, hey, you know, that tool looks really good. Where, you, you know, I can't seem to find it anywhere out here, but this right here, I think we can get this like anywhere and for probably relatively cheap. Okay, so anyways, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to emphasize that um, moon behind my headless uh, rider. I just, I, I'm posting a video right now that, you know, where the, I put this composition together. So what I'm doing is I'm just stamped, I stamped it on a piece of that vintage pre-printed paper. So nothing has been added down here, just zero um, shading or toning or anything like that. But it almost looks like I have done that because it's on that vintage paper, so. Um, this, okay, so this is the pack that I'm using right here. And this is the paper that I stamped this on. Let me see right here. I think I have this at the top. I'm trying to remember where I kept that crease. That is the one, right? I think this is the one. Oh, there's the crease right there. I can see it right through that. Okay, it's like this, no wonder. It wasn't matching up. So this is this right here. Okay, now I've just added all that tone across up there. But you can see it already has all this down here. So it already has this kind of, you know, is that part right there and there. So it already has this kind of Everything's all kind of already framed off inherently. I was just, I was mentioning in the pre-recorded version, I mean, you know, if, if someone just wanted to just stamp these things on this uh, type of paper and just call it quits, they, you know, I, I think it looks reasonably finished. I mean, if we did this, if we had this area down here like this, that we applied onto a white piece of paper, that would have been a lot of work. And we'd call that done right there. So, you know, it really, um, it gives us the option of adding in these additional um, 
shading effects or whatever, lighting effects. I guess you can color this, you know, with some additional colors too if you wanted to, but... Um, uh, you don't have to. Um, or you can do it and decide later. <laughs> All right, now, this, this thing... Okay, now, look at this right here. There's this ridge that I stamped up here with the um, sedge filler stamp, okay? So it's going like this right here. But there wasn't very much of a delineation between whatever, sky and surface, right? It all kind of blends in a little bit. So I'm giving it this ridge, a little bit of this um, silhouette up here. Okay, but see, here's this thing like this. And I'm just going like this on here. Okay, I'm not going flat. I'm not using the whole thing. I'm kind of had it, have it at a bit of an angle like this, okay? You see that like that. But then, you know, where, when I press down a little bit more, let me show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so I can go real thin like this. Okay, but then I'm pressing down a little bit more if I want to, and I can extend this out like this, you know, whatever degree, just based on how much you compress the sponge into it, you know, creating more texture. So I'm creating this little bit of a, you know, transition going from kind of lighter to darker like that, okay? So that worked pretty good right there. I mean, I haven't used a sponge really um, to apply my inks too much. I mean, I, I played around with like kitchen sponges just because, again, I was really tired of, uh, you know, losing media, you know, from it no longer being available that I really wanted to go bare bones um, with household supplies, okay? But, um, you know, so I went with the, uh, the paper towels and things like cotton balls, you know, which I'll still use those, but, um, you know, this is, it's bringing back, uh, memories of the technique because I would, I would utilize the, uh, the, um, the stylus tool, can't even think of the name here, um, in different angles all the time. I, I'd use it in its full state, but then I would use it on the edge to get in those more harder to reach areas. Okay, but see this little range right here, it really, you know, separated this um, whole hillside area from that background now. Okay, one of the things I, I haven't mentioned yet in this live stream version of this, but, uh, or part of this is, um, I'm gonna put this orange like pumpkin sitting on this headless horseman's lap, kind of a la that, uh, what is that? I think it was Legend of Sleepy Hollow, that uh, um, Disney headless horseman story, I think it was. And um, I think that guy, I forgot his name, Ichabod Crane or something, was that it? Or was that a different story? I thought he gets that flaming um, uh, jack-o'-lantern thrown at him. Like, you know, we don't see what happens. It's just like getting thrown. I don't I might be imagining it, but uh, I thought that's what happened in that, uh, in that movie cartoon. And I've done that before. I've done this um, at this... Uh, I've done the uh, Headless Horseman scenario in front of the um, covered bridge because that's the way it was in that movie. I think there was a covered bridge or something like that. Okay, this thing is working like amazing. I just toned in that whole section there like in two seconds. I don't know, three maybe. Candy left the live stream briefly to go get those, uh, that sponge. <laughs> I 
Now, obviously, this isn't going to be great for, like, super detailed work or something like that, you know, but that's where, you know, something like a colored pencil would work really well. In terms of the, the shadows. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of shading by her. And see what you do is you kind of, um, you have it a little bit darker around your objects and then you transition it a little bit lighter. So darker to lighter, okay? Uh, this one right here, it's a little bit awkward because there's this rock right here. I think I need to go in here with the colored pencil in here. And then I want to create some elongated shadows from this character. This isn't gonna be the tool for it because I have these lines that are going to be coming out from, you know, uh, the horse's legs right here and kind of transitioning out here a little bit lighter. <laughs> well, Candy, uh, the, um, we had that, uh, well, you know, Labor Day on uh, Monday. So the trash is, you know, the trash has been delayed by one day. Okay, let's give her a little bit more tone right there around her. These are little, like little fine tune adjustments, um, like I was saying in the uh, before. You know, I think it looks pretty good just without anything. But, you know what I mean? We can kind of pop things out and differentiate and uh, create, you know, I guess we're, you know, we're creating um, a greater um, amount of like visual space and lighting with these additional, you know, shading um, additions here. I'm looking to see too, um, if after I, I apply the ink, you know, when the ink kind of dries, is it a little bit lighter when it dries? And I think it is, I think it looked a little bit different up here. And my theory is because this is a pre-printed paper, and then when I apply this dye-based ink, I mean, it doesn't feel wet to me or something like that. You know, it's not like rubbing off on my fingers, but I have to think that this ink is kind of penetrating the paper a little bit so that it's less surface-oriented than when it was freshly applied and therefore could be looking a little bit lighter than it looks when freshly applied. So I, I would think that would go for all different types of colors. If you tried like a color on here, and if it was a absorbent style of um, medium, you know, something thin, it would probably look both lighter and um, duller, you know, so if you stamp out some kind of, or color this in with like a bright, you know, brighter orange or, you know, I don't know, some other color on the back of it. Um, or not on the back of it. If you, I don't know, just color something on there, it will dull and lighten up. I don't know. You got to test it um, with your different media. On something like this too, it, I don't know. There's not a lot of tooth to it. So I don't know if you can use like a pastel. Someone mentioned pastels with the use of these types of sponges. And um, you might be able to apply like some lighter tones in here a little bit with the, uh, you know, some pastels. Or you can spray seal this with like a work workable fixative, which gives the surface a little bit of texture. And then you might be able to use something like, uh, you know, pastels on here if it doesn't already apply. But that would look pretty cool in here too. Okay, so what I did here was, see, I'm able to add in a pretty light, um, grayscale behind there because I wanted her to stand out a little bit more so she was kind of light against light so I made her light against a little bit darker right there and making her a little bit darker back there too to make her stand out a little bit more so like that all right um, 
Let's see. I want to add some shadows into those hands, but I don't want to do it with this. Not detailed enough for that. I have this rock coming in here. We have this big, huge um, illuminated area here. Okay, this is what I do with lighting a lot of times, okay? There's, a lot of times there's big areas of light in my scenes. Um, like in something like this. You know, having a kind of a light up here a little bit kind of centralizes the light. And then we have this area in here that separates top from bottom down here. It's not just top from bottom, you know, sky from surface. It's just kind of, if you have too much of something, it's, it's, you can vary things a little bit, and then it makes it look like it's a little bit more distant from one another because we're saying that this place is going back in distance. It's not something that, that we're looking at from the top down, and it's flat of equal distance, okay? So what I mean by that is, um, let's take something like a torn paper towel right in here, and let's create a little bit of a, you know, Oh, uh, it'll be a textural change, but it'll also be a value change in here. All right, so let's go like this in here. So you just keep bisecting areas of illumination, basically, okay? And it doesn't have to be like a harsh, um, you know, separation. But you go like that. Now, see, suddenly this looks a little bit closer than this space up here. And then... It's also, it varies it. You go instead of just darker and then lighter and then darker down here, okay? You're going dark, light, dark, light, dark. So you've changed kind of the pattern of uh, that space. It's like music or something like that, you know? You want to have kind of a change in, you know, patterning a little bit. Um, you know, for variation and auditory interest. So you can do the same thing with visual interest too. All right, here I'm trying to rip this towel to give it a little bit more variation. I like, I really like that look right there. So let's do some more of it here. Let's go with, uh... okay, so see this area right here. Now there's already a little bit, I already have my sedge filler there. It's given me a little bit of a change, but let's do a little bit more of it again right here. So I'm just going to tap it very lightly like this. Okay, I have, I'm tapping most of it on the uh, on the paper like that. So we've changed that a little bit. See, there's just a little bit of shade up there. I mean, you can do more of it too. You can come into it with a you know colored pencil and get more exact. But this is a pretty uh, pretty nice head start to it this. So this is it right here. I just added this right in here. So it's, you know, I mean, yeah, at some point in time, there's going to be too much of it. But, uh, you know, I don't want to bisect every like eighth of an inch. So it's going light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, you know, like three times across two inches or something like that. But, you know, I don't know. It just has a, see this like arc up here, how round it is like that. Let's do this. Let's come in here like this. And let's bring this section across like here and make it a little bit varied like that. It doesn't have to be something, anything like harsh or anything like that. It could be very subtle, okay? Let's see, I've done this now. So now it's not so round because I've broken up this shape a little bit, this arcing shape, okay? Let's do it again over here. Like with this. No, I'm not. I'm just doing it kind of for the sake of kind of making a point here now. But um, I get, you know, I want you to be able to see the difference here. Okay, so see that right there. This is a little bit more varied, and it's less kind of uniform of an arc like that. I never used a sponge for my makeup. Hmm. Um, I never have either, Jeannie. <laughs> that makes two of us. Okay, on this one right here, let's do this a different way. Let's put 
darker from the you know top down instead of you know from the bottom up let's see how this looks here yeah see for me i wasn't thinking about makeup sponges um because to me it wasn't like a household item you know but it's like oh all right everyone's it seems like a lot of you know the comments that i'm getting is uh everyone has these now some people didn't use it for makeup some people bought it for you know crafting you know so they're saying things like uh you know hey i got some of those when i was into you know the pan pastels or something like that or you know or they've had them sitting around um so that's good to know though because i think again you know we want to have uh, things that are kind of readily available okay i'm adding a little bit of tone behind her to make her stand out a little bit more like that but this looks it looks better now let's let's this area needs a little bit more again so let's do this again right here i'm just going to use like the you know, like the tip of this right here, okay? I need to turn it so I can see it a little bit more. So I can see, you know, over the top end of it. Change your um, configuration of your, uh, your pieces for the easiest accessibility and visibility um, for your your ink application, or whatever you're applying, your media applications. A lot of people like to work um, right side up the whole time. Um, but it's good to move things around a little bit. You can see things from a different perspective too that way. Okay, so see that? I'm just adding that little variation right in there like that. I think we can use that over here too. Red paper towel, it's a, I don't know, it's a really form, formidable uh, technique. You can use it in your clouds too, skies, you know, a lot of people do mountains with it. Not in the shape of this jagged, you know, thing, but you can, I don't know, cut it out or whatever. All right, so there we go there. Oh, the trash is long gone. Candy threw out her uh, 100, bag of 100 cosmetic sponges like this. Um, but, you know, it, it works now, so if you get any in the future. Um. <laughs> Hello, Froggy Fresh. How, how are things going? Oh, Jeannie's still at work. Jeannie, if you can't hear me, um, turn up the, the sound and blast it through, uh, you know, the intercom system there at, at, uh, at your, at your work. Let's make, the, let's vary this a little bit more too. I'm reacquainting myself with the torn paper towel, uh, look here. All right, that one was pretty uh, pretty dark up there. See, I kind of start it a little bit lighter and more conservative, and then I kind of progressively get a little bit more, I don't know, whatever, intense, What if it comes to colors. In this case, it gets darker in, you know, in terms of shading here, okay? So it's just like your you're kind of like turning up the visual volume just slowly, but you're doing it across, you know, different um, things. If someone goes like really harsh like that, just in one area before they've applied it to the rest of the piece area, sometimes they think it looks a little bit too harsh and they think, oh my God, this is like really kind of doesn't look good. 
And that's because it's something has only been applied in one area. So it doesn't relate to the rest of it. That's why you kind of, you know, turn things up kind of, you know, I mean, you can develop one area, you know, don't put like two taps and then work in another area like that, you know, not that extreme, but you kind of bring everything in focus, you know, um, together. Um, and that way it's easy to adjust to. It's like, okay, that is a little bit too dark. So I won't do that on the rest of the pieces, you know, the rest of the areas around it too, or you, you can test something in a small little area. You don't have to develop it to, you know, kind of the extreme, you know, kind of end result, potential end result. All right. So there we go right there. Um, Let's see. Does that person have their head up the other person's butt? <laughs> Froggy Fresh, if that's what you see, then it is. I always say, hey, um, whatever, whatever you want it to be, it can be. But in reality, no, they're a little bit, you know, you can see their face right here. However, if you wanted to do that froggy fresh, what you do is the technique is you just color in that, like that pants right there of that person or whatever, and then it will look like, uh, you know, as you described. <laughs> All right. Okay, good, good. I have this um, read stamp here. So here, here's what you can do too. Here's what's really fun about like doing this little paper towel masking like that. That kind of represents this little, you know, whatever, little ridge of grass or whatever, dirt, right? So what you can do is you can put something on the other side of it. So you go back to your mask like that, okay? And then you put you know, some of these grasses coming up behind it so that it looks very um, kind of purposeful like that. See what I mean? So you utilize your established, you know, or whatever you've established as like a ridge or something like that, or, a, you know, just a change in that uh, surface area like that. And then you can develop it even more so. You see it like that right there. So again, it's just kind of creating that extra depth um, within your piece. And, uh, you know, a pretty easy way to do it. any other locations this area down here was created with the art foamies version of the reeds because um, I wanted something really large down there but let's let's give it a little bit of depth with the smaller one as well or depth or I don't know whatever variation I guess Is that the shading that I need on there? Is it time for highlighting? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Thanks, Rocky Fresh. When I listen to my voice, though, I kind of cringe. Um, so I don't listen to it. <laughs> you notice on kind of the like the final version of uh, a lot of my videos, I just do it to music. So I increasingly remove out the voice for my kind of like ideal version of the uh, of these uh, instructional videos. All right, so let's go in the. Um, the shading has been established in here. That sure worked out well with the uh, with that um, paper towel in there, and that sponge worked. I don't know that sponge worked pretty good. So again, I'm using that one with that with that kind of edge cut out on there. Um, I'll have to work, I'll, I'll try the you know the rounded ones sometime, but so far so good with this. This I mean it just reminds me of a. Uh, the color box stylus tool, but probably, I don't know, maybe 30% wider because it's the same kind of density of sponge um, as I mentioned in a previous video trying these ones. Um, the color box stylus tool, they, they, they use different sponge materials on there over the years. And the one that they finally got to, I mean, it was still better than anything else out there in terms of ink applications but it was inferior to their previous version of the sponge material that they were using. I heard sponge, um, sometimes it's, it's hard to get a hold of just from an industry-wide type of thing. But the, the better sponge was this one, you know, that they were using on that, uh, on those stylus tools. I don't know if it's the same exact material. It sure feels that way though. Okay, so a tan acrylic paint pen. Dave's wrecking Froggy Fresh's bedroom. Tell Dave not to do that. <laughs> Crank it up, Genie. Uh, blast it. Put it on your speakers and blast it uh, out of the window too. Okay, look at this. All right, look at that right here. So that little guy right there. Here, let me zoom in here for these little smaller little areas here. So see that little thing like that? Uh, brings out those eyes if you want to make anything kind of look a little bit spookier in terms of uh, like animals. The glowing eye treatment. Now, if this was kind of a like a real kind of black and white-ish type of scene, and I was doing it on white paper, and I was using black inks in here, I mean, you still do it on here, but I want to go for that kind of antique look here. So I'm not going to do it, but um, I, I think if you gave it like red eyes or something like that, it would look really cool. Or you can do a, like a whole scenario like black and white or something like that, but then just on your creature, you give it like two red eyes, so it's like, you know, spot coloring. Okay, so um, when it comes to highlighting, we're, we're looking at the areas that are illuminated already, okay? So you can see this stamp design right here already has the lighting on there, so you don't have to invent everything, okay? I mean, you can add lighting where there isn't any lighting, too, like little highlights, but I'm just following along, you know, to start with, with areas that are already kind of illuminated, okay? So now you can see her leg is, you know, it's lighter now than the paper, okay? And I'm also doing that thing, what do you call it? lineless or outline. I, what was that thing where it's like lineless coloring or whatever what they called it? Outline. I, 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 okay, I can't remember what they called it. But it's where you kind of eradicate the lines. Because lines um, in whatever artwork, um, it tends to flatten things out a little bit, okay? 
because you don't see a bunch of outlines around things usually, right? They're tonal and they're defined by light. So my hand right here, you know, doesn't have some kind of outline up here. So if you eradicate it, like, I don't know how close I can get in here, um, it looks, you know, a little bit more three-dimensional. Not that the outlines are bad, you know, the outlines, that's a certain type of look to things. But I'm trying to kind of represent lighting in here, so I just got rid of the, uh, that line up top there, so you see this figure like that. So she, 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 it's just a little bit of a subtle thing. White would stand out a lot more, so uh, using this one is really fun. Okay, so see this one right here, she has a little tiny kind of outline on the top of her form, but since this lighter pen uh, stands out a little bit, um, is lighter, it's lighter than the background, so I don't need that um, defining line there anymore. You need the defining line on there if it's real light in the background, but I stamped it on top of this, you know, this paper, so, you know, the background is already inherently um, darker than this pen. If you just joined in, what I'm doing is I'm stamping on, um, I stamped everything on the, the pre-printed vintage paper like this right here. Okay, so no, I didn't start it, you know, we're, there's no white on the paper anywhere, uh, just to begin with. That little kitten's awfully cute. I've seen the photos. Okay. Right on the back, so those two character here. Uh, I'll never look at that same that stamp the same again. Uh, Froggy Fresh. <laughs> if anyone just joined in, just scroll up in the uh, the conversation window. Um, and the hilarity will in ensue. <laughs> it would be an interesting um what would they name that stamp you know if you were a stamp company with that um visual scenario there hello linda good to see you I'm just doing the uh, the shading and the uh, the lighting in this one, Linda. I was kind of running around, or well, I wasn't running around too much, but I was doing some, um, you know, I I did the um, the stamping of all this in a pre-recorded video. Let me see if this one's a little bit lighter here. I think I was using these two pens before, and I thought this one looks lighter than this one, but this one looked lighter when I was using it on another one, but not, I don't know, this one looks a little bit, maybe it was between this one and another one I was using, I don't know. But let me see if this one's a little bit light. Okay, this one's a little bit lighter. Maybe this is the one I should have been using here. Let's see, let's bring out those eyes a little bit more. Okay. All right, so you can use two pens if you want to. <laughs> yeah, this one's a little bit lighter. It, it looked lighter when I was using it, but then I thought, eh, it's kind of getting... When it was drying out, it was it was dark, you know, getting a little bit too dark for me. Now this one's like quite a bit lighter, so I'm going to use it a little bit more sparingly.
a little bit more dramatic though, huh? Um, with a little bit more contrast. Again, this isn't white right here. You can see this is like white right here. All right. Linda, go bust out those uh, those uh, those cosmetic sponges. I think it, I think they work pretty darn good, and are really convenient. Linda. If you don't mind, you know, be saying to everyone, Linda said she has a bunch of these uh, sponges here. So Linda, did you try using the sponges before and then you didn't like them or you weren't using them for ink? Maybe you were using them for uh, pastels or something? Okay, so here's what we did. We added the um, the paper towel like this, right? To get this little bit of a edge here so that lo this looks like it's in front of this little area in the back of it, right? So wherever you use this thing like this, okay? And you tone in right in there, okay? But then where you add the highlights is right on that intersection between the edge of your paper towel and that shadow. So this is what this kind of looks like around in here. Okay, so you're saying that this is the top of the, uh, you know, the whatever, the cluster or whatever, you know, the grass cluster. Like that. So that part is the uppermost part of it, just like the top of the, uh, the forms are, you know, the... Uh, the parts that are getting illuminated, the back, you know, the shoulders, you know, the top of her dress, the edge of her, you know, body and form and whatever drapery, right? Same thing with this. So this is the top portion of this area right here, but it, it's grass though. So it's not, you know, it's, or it's like, you know, it's a little cluster of, you know, loose grass fibers or something like that. So I'm just adding the dot instead of the line in here. And I mean, you, you know, you can add in a little bit or a lot if you want to, you know, something like this. Okay, so again, it's right on the meeting of, you know, whatever lighter and darker or near and far like that. Okay, you see it right up here. But see, this area in here is getting kind of a little bit dark up there. So um, what I'll do is, or I can use, you know, the darker version right here too. But let me just use this so you can, I don't know, I hope you can see this on your screen a little bit. But see this right here? I'll just add a little bit of it right in there so that stands out just a touch more like that. Okay. Do you see that edge right here a little bit where it's a little bit illuminated? This right here, I don't... I don't think I used my uh, paper towel. I just sponged in some color, but where I didn't sponge in that color, you know, that tones right up here and a little bit down here, but you see this little light area. I'm just going to reiterate just kind of what happened, you know, unplanned, but it's still there. It's light and I'll give it a little bit of a highlighting in there that All right, 
So we'll just keep doing a little bit of that. I've drawn a water horizon in black. A water horizon in black. I've done that too, Candy. Sometimes when you have, um, with my Seaside Cove, okay, I do the horizon in dark all the time, and that's to emphasize, you know, a lot of times what's going into the sky, so that it creates that separation between sky and surface. So, um, and then if you look at photos too, that horizon is often kind of darker, and it might get lighter, you know, in the foreground or something like that, or in mid-grounds, wherever. Um, but take a look at that. Take a look at um, just say something like Google something like you know night ocean you know horizon or something like that or or you know type in you know sunset ocean something like that and then look at the imagery and then look at that horizon um, line in there. And uh, you'll see um, often, not all, not in all cases, but uh, you'll, you'll often see this um, darker horizon area. And, you know, if it's nighttime, I often do mine black. Not always, I, you know, I wasn't always doing that. Um, I, I don't know, somewhere, you know, I became... You know, when I look up these different scenarios, it's like, oh, okay, that's, you know, that's the way that really looks. Not that I'm going for realism, but um, uh, I just seen how, you know, whatever nature responds here and how nature looks, how light really looks, I guess. And uh, when I did that, when I started doing that darker horizon, I, I thought it looked really good. A lot of times I, I need that separation between, you know, the top of my uh, seaside cove and the sky, you know, for a stronger uh, delineation. I had one around here somewhere. I don't know where it is. I don't know. You, you can see what I did, too. You can look up, uh, you know, just on YouTube, right? You know, just to look up Stamscapes in Seaside Cove. All right, this isn't flowing anymore. I think I clogged my pen just or something like that. So you just kind of press this down like this and do a little scribble to get it flowing again. Now it's flowing too much. <laughs> I kind of utilize this a little bit clogged up sometimes. You know, it's, I can feel, I can feel like half of the paint coming out, um, which sometimes can be good because it gives me a smaller dot, if I want that. Then if I want to go for a, a larger kind of flow, then I just kind of unclog it again. All right, it's kind of bringing the area to life a little bit um, with all these little sparkling little highlighting touches in here. This is where I have a lot of fun with my pieces. I like bringing kind of light into darkness and texture. It's like, you know, if you had some kind of scenario or something like that and if you brought in like little leds or something like that or kind of shimmering you know like illumination like if you're running like some electrical into something and you're bringing your kind of set um you know to life that that's like it's really fun you know watching that type of thing happen Okay, so um, let's see here.
Yeah, this is almost flowing too much. A lot of paint is coming out. Which you'd normally want in a pen, right? All right. So there's our kind of illumination down there. Oh, I didn't go into it with my uh, colored pencil yet here. I put the sponges in a mesh bag to wash. Linda, we we asked Candy not to throw her uh, sponges out. She threw them all. She threw it away. We begged her to keep it, huh? You're the first person, Candy. It's like uh, to say that, you know. I just threw those out, or you threw any of them out. <laughs> It's like, you know, like it's like with Linda, you know, that was the, the response that I'm, at least the people that are commenting, you know, it's like, oh, I have some of those, yeah. Now, one person, one person did say, hey, you know, yeah, I, I'm, you know, that's, they use it for their ink, you know, to, to you know, to add their ink applications. Okay, white, uh, black uh, colored pencil here. Now, I'm not going to do this full shadow for this because I don't know how far it'd go down here, but it would be this elongated type of shadow with that moon like right on the horizon like that. So you just kind of fake it a little bit. You just kind of go down a little bit like this and you have it stronger right at the source of the shadow. And then you kind of just dissipate it a little bit. You break it up like this, okay? So you have it a little bit darker like that around the base of the object, and then you kind of, you know, transition into lightness like this, okay? So it's kind of going like that. And then I have it kind of going, you know, it's like roughly to the inside of this, uh, or, you know, where this head would be, and it's going like this, it's going out in perspective a little bit. Okay, so the shadow for, let's say, this object right here, if I drew them in, would be going out at this angle. See, like that. But, you know, right, let's do that. Let's, let's just emphasize that point a little bit. Okay, so the shadow's right here. Let me get the angle. So you create the shadow at the base of the, uh, you know, the, the object. So, okay. It's not going to be too extreme, but you know, I'll just go in on like this a little bit. I'll just make it a little bit darker than the background because it's already in a dark area. Okay. And this person's foot right here. This is the angle right here. Go like this. So it's kind of like that. You know, they're casting a little bit of a shadow. Uh, I guess we can do it with a deer here too, or this uh, elk. So let me get my... I'm going across the shadow over here just, you know, so it's not so extreme. But you can see, you know, all the shadows in there now. I guess they're helping a little bit. It kind of makes it a little bit more dramatic, maybe. The tree here would be really kind of extreme. This, you know. It's like something like that, and... This tree right here. Okay, now remember, it's not really kind of a straight line. I, I have been doing mostly straight lines because it doesn't matter that much. Okay, but see this right here. This, if this tree was cast in a shadow, I can go like this. But this is supposed to be the slope, right? So I'm going to do this. I'll see where it generally goes like this, the angle. But then I'll just kind of, I'll slope it downward a little bit, like, you know, it's like an arc like this because it's on a, you know, it's on a hill. Like that. So we'll do something like that. I 
I guess, I don't know, I guess it kind of strengthened the moonlight, didn't it? We're saying that that moonlight is bright enough to, you know, have these objects cast shadows now. Like that. Now, do, do your shadows real light, you know. I'm doing it real light because, uh, you know, so I can just darken accordingly. Um, if I like it or not. You know, if I don't like it, then, I, you know, then it'll be just like this really light shade of gray that barely, you know, is barely visible. Now, I, you know, for something like this, you know, I don't know if I want to, I guess I could cast some shadow. Let me see. It's going like that roughly. It, let, let, let's just, let's just put her in a little bit more of a kind of a general shadow around her. Okay. I'm not going to have this elongated shadow, in other words. You just have, okay, Linda, you just have so many tools. Yeah, I, I totally get it. I just can't use them with them all. Make, what about, what if you kind of like hollow out one of these and then you can put it into like your ring finger like that so it's not taking up any space on your desk so that when you're applying stuff with others, if you do want to use this, what you like at that, you know? Or you can have one on, like, your off hand, whatever hand you, you know, you're not using, and then use it like that. <laughs> uh, when you do that, Linda, we want a photo of that. <laughs> I get it though. We can't use everything. I'm trying to think if this, um, you know, the sponge is giving me something, you know, that I don't get with others. Um, you know, maybe from a textural standpoint, I don't know. One thing that it's doing really well for me on this paper, though, is giving me a lot of coverage. Now, this paper is a little bit sealed, though, you know, because it's pre-printed and it has that printer's ink on it, you know, to print this patterning on here. So, remains to be seen if I'll enjoy it on, like, a, you know, a cardstock, a glossy, or... Well, I did use it on the glossy. I guess I did use it on that one yesterday. I used it on the glossy and the semi-gloss. I, I just did like a real preliminary type of thing, like like with two layers maximum. I didn't use it with like several, several layers of a of tone. So you know, with the sponge, I'd have to see if it's applying too much, you know, and building up colors too fast, maybe, um, where it's hard to apply the darker tones if you've already built up a lot of the lighter tones, and you know, in that style, you know, the layered. Dive style of uh, ink applications. I don't know. I don't foresee anything coming up, you know, like, oh, um, this is definitely a weakness, you know, to it or something like that, though. Oh, I do need to try out maybe some different brands, though. Um, I got to think that that foam um, density is a little bit different from maybe some brand to brand or something like that. We'll see if it's a little bit extreme. My wife was saying that one of them felt a lot more firm to her. I'm trying to remember what she said about these ones. I think she said these ones are the soft ones or softer.
All right, so adding this uh, little bit of tone in here. So I think there's a pretty good amount of variation in here. I, I'm doing a lot more with this um, than I thought I would. Uh, and in, in terms of uh, the, you know, the texturing in here. Okay, so now that I see where everything's kind of situated, I'm going to add a little bit more of the uh, tiny rocks in here. It's at the base of a lot of these different objects, okay, but I, I need a little bit more in the open now, I think. Because this is a little bit monotonous throughout here. I mean, it's not supposed to be attention getting or something like this, you know, like, you know, clusters of you know, like grass that things are sitting in, you know, but I just, I need a little bit more um, variation in that area, just as a texture. Like right in here, you know, um, okay, but you know, a little bit boring. So, a little bit of variation can help texturally. It's it's not you know it doesn't get anyone's attention at all. But I don't know, for me even if it's kind of subconscious or something like that. I think it looks a little bit better. Okay, so one of the things I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, video, um, I think, or at the end of my previous one where I did the composition, the um, this headless rider right here, which is the lady on horse, I'm going to put this little jack-o'-lantern in here and it's going to be like orange or something like that. I'm going to find the right tone of orange um, for a pumpkin. I'm going to put like a little jack-o'-lantern a la, you know, Legend of Sleepy Hollow or something like that, you know, where this headless horseman's got this uh, uh, jack-o'-lantern, illuminated jack-o'-lantern and uh, throw it at, uh, again, I think it was Ichabod Crane or wasn't that it or something or is that a character from a different uh, movie? Um, but I think that'll look, well, oh, we'll see, you know, if I add it in there, it looks kind of weird, then no, but I think kind of one kind of like off orange type of a uh, little pumpkin right here, sitting here, and it's the only thing in the scene that's, you know, colored. I think that might look, uh, that might be kind of fun to add in. I mean, I did do it, I'm not going to do it on this video here. I won't do it on a video in general you know, working on like a little like quarter inch type of little thing. All right, so on these hands, I forgot to add in some highlights in these hands right here, kind of important little uh, visual elements right here. If, they, if you have this ape hands right here, it'd be f funny if you add it in like a, I don't know, pink nail polish on those nails or something like that. All right, I think that is it for the lighting on there. It's as far as I could see, I don't want to, oh, okay, so if I wanted more bushes in here, so we need those little Scooby-Doo kind of cartoon eyes, you know, in the shadows right in here, like this, you're going to hear the crickets here or something like that.
What's the fun level for you in adding in those eyes, Linda? Or, Linda just did. Uh, check out Linda's stuff. I already say this. Check out everyone's pieces that are... Uh, check out Candy's piece. Whoever's adding, you know, like posting stuff in the, uh, the Facebook group. Um, but Linda just added in her, uh, you know, early Halloween... Um, uh, pieces and uh, you know she's got the eyeballs in the uh, in the darkness for me that those are really fun to add in here I'm gonna add in some like little fireflies up here too okay just some little glowing orbs or something like that it just bring, brings in a little bit of extra dimension to some otherwise kind of darker areas or maybe even uninteresting areas in here like that it kind of brings the piece to life a little bit one thing about this uh adding in this um lighting in here or highlights um that doesn't really kind of make sense is that these highlights are lighter than the light source okay so that moon ideally would be a little bit lighter i can try to go over that with a you know a little bit of white pigment ink or something like that and just do it on a very light layer so that color is showing through but you know to me i, I don't want to do that um at this point in time i don't know I could add in a little bit of fog or something like that in here too, but uh, like I said, I'll, I'll see what it looks like in the end result, and I'll, I'll see if I want to add in um, some additional um, element like that. Now, if I had a, I have these other colors of a uh, pigment inks, but I haven't really used them through these. I think I have a tan like color box. Um, I don't know what it would look like on here. I could use a tan and then go over with a white or something like that. I can experiment around it or something like that. I'll do that if I think it needs something, but I, I don't know if it really needs anything at this point in time. So, okay, so what you'll see, you know, when I post this scene on either Flickr, uh, which anyone can see on my gallery on Flickr, it's under it, it's under Kevin Nakagawa, I think. It's not under Stampscapes, if anyone looks that up. Um, or I'll post it on Facebook and, you know, Pinterest and all the, the different things. You'll see the uh, little pumpkin up here. And then, I don't know, if I add in anything else in here, maybe you'll be able to see the difference right here. Okay, so, but anyways, um, yeah. I add a little bit more shading in here than I thought, you know. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes with, if I start bringing something up, someone asked me if I think about all these things when I'm not, doing something in a video but sometimes talking about something like this and trying to explain it you know things occur to me that i probably wouldn't have thought to do had i not been making a video or kind of you know bringing some point up you know so like these shadows really helped i think these directional shadows in here i think it's a little bit more dramatic with them in there um so i don't think i would have done that um uh, without you guys <laughs> So those types of things like that are um, really fun to do. So again, let's, let's take a look here just in a closing little example here. So this is the, the paper, you know, that this is from, and it's done right, like right there. It almost looks like the whole tone changed just from doing that grayscale over it, but a um, little compare contrast like that. Let's see, I don't even know if I could see that big, huge area down here with that extra tone in there. But certainly influence, though. You can see all those different tones in the background, like right in here. Um, you know, throughout here, you can see that little warmth change to a little bit of a lighter area in here. See this little light area right here? And again, I bisected it, you know, with this little, you know, shaded um, zone right behind it. So, um, to me, uh, Linda, so doing those monster maps, Linda, if I were to do one again, 
this year the 11 by 17. I might glue a couple of these pieces together like this. And I'd be stuck with it. There's ones that don't have this hard kind of edge on here. But just having that head start to all of that tone and texture and variation on the paper itself, if I'm going for that look anyway, you know what I mean? It just seems like a lot faster to do starting off with that paper to begin with. And then all we have to do is just add in some shadows, you know, so I added in a lot of shadows in here. You can, you can even speed up the process probably just by doing it with a colored pencil. You know, I did it with the, you know, the ink. So I got a little bit of different texturing and things like that. But I think I could probably, if I wanted to do a really fast version of this one, I'd probably just use the colored pencil in there, you know, and just go in here and add these shadows in here. I wouldn't add that big vignette around here, you know, with all colored pencil that would take me forever, you know. So that, you know, that covers a lot more ground. But um, I don't know, this paper is really fun to do with, uh, you know, kind of this whatever vintage Halloween type of scenario. So something like this, you know, with these different types of images, you do, you know, like just this little create, you know, this little statue in here, you know, that would be like, a, I don't know. A, 10, 12 minute scene probably or something like that starting off with this so um, I don't know uh, pretty fun pretty fun and fast Linda's got 20 of them wow glad you like it froggy fresh um, that uh, those uh, like grave diggers or something I don't know if they're grave diggers but um, that those are from a uh, hundred proof press. I don't know, Linda. Did you buy that one? Linda bought a bunch of the uh, uh, the imagery that I used on there, but this one's a uh, hundred proof press. It's R forty four seventy six. It's probably their size, and then there's their code like that. But uh, yeah, and then the hands like this are hundred proof press. The gorilla hand was yeah, that was yes pigs can fly from somewhere in 90 through 93 and they are no longer around jackson wyoming yeah i don't know that's the copyright free um hand though so it might be uh, out there from someone else as well but um anyway yeah genie uh genie d uh did you do an 11 by 17 last year i don't remember that but I don't know, Jeannie, you might, you might, okay, Jeannie, you might start, you might have some fun with uh, this type of paper. I think everyone, you know, could, if, if you like that kind of look, of course, you know, I think this paper would be interesting for you to start out with. Jeannie, if you do that, though, um, and if you employ, Jeannie uses a lot of uh, paints and thicker types of applications of media. This is a really thin, you know, it's like printer paper or something like that they'd be printed on. It, I would recommend Jeannie that um, she takes some um, spray adhesive. Now, this one happens to be back in front, but you spray this all down and then adhere this to a stiffer piece of cardstock because I, I, I think that if you did all that stuff with the Dr. Martens and those really thick applications of um, media, you might get a little bit of buckling on this type of paper, it'd be, it might be really kind of bowed and waved a little bit. I don't know, you know, unless that adds to the entire process. But I think when you're adding all that type of thing and the things are getting a little bit wet, it might have a better feel for you if this was mounted on something a little bit stiffer. But for my use right here, just going with the, uh, you know, the dye based inks, everything was like really thin. Oh, I did stamp out all my objects with the Brilliance Black just to get a little bit darker. Um, you know, I didn't have to worry about that. But now if I was to, you know, if someone was to frame this or something like that, again, it might be kind of nice to mount this on something a little bit more stiff. It just has a better feel to it than, you know, like a thin piece of like practically copy, you know, copy paper, you know, weight um, paper in there. So, all right. So anyways, uh, yeah, I am sold on this vintage paper for 
you know, kind of quick and relatively quick. This is, again, this is a really big scene right here, but, um, you know, quick applications for this kind of more vintage aged look, you know, I think you can come up with some of that has more of a sepia looking um, color to it. It's a warmer kind of brick color. Well, sepia or sepia. And you can do that and you can stamp in your different colors of inks too. You don't have to go with black. You know, it might look a little bit more aged if you go with a, you know, a color, you know, that's going to create a little bit less contrast between, you know, the, uh, the imagery in the background. So, yeah, but do tests on it. That's one of the things I keep saying, you know, anytime I'm starting one of these, because I don't want someone to get this type of paper and then they stamp on top of it like I did with um, a dye-based ink and... Okay, so here's here's this. I stamped, that is a Marvy Black image over here. And then I think, I don't know, I, I think I did it again over here, like with the stays on or something like that, but... Uh, or I guess I can use this side. I was tossing this on out right here, but that was my Marvy black right here. So, you know, a lot of you have different types of black inks in your, um, in your supplies. So just test them out. I don't want someone to, you know, start on something like this. I'm ready to go. I got all the stamps like this and I'm stamping it out and it stamps out like in a 10% gray as opposed to the black or something like that. Test out your um, Versifying Claire you know, your Brilliance Black, if you have it. Um, what You might have a dye base black that works on that brand of paper that you use, but, uh, you know, just do a couple test prints like that and see what works uh, the best for, you know, that brand of paper that you're using. And something should work on there, okay? Is that a dead body? Which one? Like, one of these right here? Or was it one of the stamps I, um, you know... I don't know. I see these more as like statuary or something like that on like a, you know, like a cemetery or something of that sort. I'm sure that these things right here, maybe not this one right here, but she's probably a rendering of some um, reclining f marble figure somewhere. All right. Fun stuff. Throw out, you know, kind of the, your scale and distance and all that type of notions that we might employ in, you know, standard scene stamping, stamping scenes out. Like I said, these figures are kind of on the same plane. So, you know, if that was the same size of that, you know what I mean? It would be this gigantic thing. So I don't, you know, when I'm using all this different imagery from all these companies like that, I, I keep to it a little bit, you know, I have like these larger foliage down here and smaller ones going back in the distance. But, you know, as far as the figures go and things like that, I, you know, I, I'm not, I, I, after last year's um, uh, monster maps, I kind of threw that out the, the window and I really enjoyed it. It was like, oh, ultimate freedom of stamp positioning. You know what I mean? If you have this statue up here and you have a cabin down here, that's this big, no big deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's really kind of liberating for, a, you know, a, whatever, a certain type of scenario like that. No fun for me if fast. Well, add in more of, uh, as you say, those little details, Linda, and take as much time as you want. So the, the foundation for this, stamping all my objects out, that took, I think it was, I need to see what it was. I think it was 40 minutes, which isn't too bad, you know, because that means for, you know, on a standard size card, like that would be like 10 minutes per card or something like that on there. I would put some red blood on there to add some contrast. I'm going to have the, the orange pumpkin up here, so I don't want any other colors going on down here. Now, if I was going to have something like a red something up here and do like that spot coloring where nothing but red shows up, like in one of those photos, I would do that. But I want that, you know, there's going to be like a little orange pumpkin uh, jack-o'-lantern sitting on the... Uh, the lap up there. Maybe a little bit dark with the eyes kind of glowing orange, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to see. I'll have to find the right orange for it. So the place that I look for the right colors of oranges, I really don't have a lot of um, different um, colors of... I don't have a big, huge spectrum of, like, card stocks, but... Like, 
I just look at stuff like this. I mean, this pumpkin is not going to be very large, but see, this might be the right color of um, orange right here, and the pumpkin's only going to be like this big right here. So I'll look in like for that tone of orange or different tones of orange in things like magazines or something like that, where there's just some blank area. And then I'll utilize that. I'll cut out like a little, you know, that oval or pumpkin shape in there. And then I draw onto it um, with the uh, the paint pens for the uh, the face. And that worked out really well for me um, when I stopped looking for like the right color of paper in my paper supplies. I was had much more access, you know, or, uh, you know, variation looking through like magazines that I didn't mind cutting up. So anyways, yeah, no rules, Candy. B bust those rules out and do whatever you want, you know, I mean, which should be the case for just about everything that we do. But um, I don't know when it comes to kind of the more playful applications of uh, imagery and stuff like that, you know, why not? It changed the way I stamp a little bit, you know, after doing those monster maps last year. Or at least uh, it freed up some, uh, some different uh, things in some respects. <laughs> All right, folks, have a great rest of evening. Great to see you. Hope you don't have any nightmares or anything like that uh, after watching this. If you did, uh, apologies in advance. But I'll post this up. I, I can't wait to uh, finish this off and see what it looks like and try to integrate that pumpkin in with the uh, surrounding area. So see, here, here, here's a little thing right here. See this little, that hand right there is like on the reins. So I'm gonna have to put, I'll probably put that pumpkin there and I'm gonna redraw just that little line and that rein. So it's like sitting on the lap you know, like right here, and then the rain is right here in front of it. So that, you know, that's a little type of thing that kind of integrates it into the scene a little bit more. You know, that wouldn't be bad, you know what I mean? If I had a pumpkin at like a jack o' lantern over here that's really small, but then you put like smaller ones like sitting in here, and that'd be kind of cool, you know, a couple other ones. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. All right, good night, everyone. Hello, bugs. Have a great rest of evening, and uh, I'll get these uh, videos posted. Thanks for watching.